Hi, I'm Rusty Komori, and this is Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. I was the head coach of the Punahou School Boys Varsity Tennis Team for 22 years, and we were fortunate to win 22 consecutive state championships. This show is based on my books, Beyond the Lines and Beyond the Game, and it's about inspiration, welcoming adversity, and building a superior culture of excellence. My special guest today is one of the star players on our University of Hawaii men's basketball team. He is Jovan McClanahan, and today we are going beyond teamwork. Hey, Jovan, welcome to Beyond the Lines. Hi, Rusty. Thank you for having me again. It's so nice to see you. Jovan, you are such a fun, great player for all of us to watch on the team, but I want to first ask you if you can share about where you grew up and and how did you ultimately end up deciding on coming to the University of Hawaii? Yeah, so um, I originally grew up in California, the Bay Area to be specific, and I'm sure many people may know, but it's it's a town, Vallejo. It's like, it's not a huge city, but we do have a little bit of city life, but mostly the Bay Area to be exact. And how I grew up, I have five brothers, and one of my brothers is a twin, which I was with like pretty much every second of my life until we went to college. But um, I think me having a twin brother like really changed my uh, my life in the greatest way, and I couldn't imagine it without him. But it just made everything so competitive, and like it was always a competition to get better. So I can only thank him for that, and also thank my family for driving home like a competitive nature house and, and my brothers we're the youngest brothers by the way so uh just having older brothers it was just like we're always trying to be better than them and they're trying to push us so I think it was just like an incredible environment to grow up in no oh, that's so great that you have a twin and that you guys really push each other and so how did how did you connect with coach Iran and ultimately come to UH yeah so great question so out of high school um like I said, I'm going to mention my twin a lot because he has a lot to do with my story. So um, Jaden, me and Jaden were on the same team and we were getting recruited by similar schools, but uh, due to our position, like we're not as tall as people that play basketball or anything like that. But um, when it comes to recruiting, they were like, are you guys a package deal? And, and they kind of like limited our recruitment. So we kind of had to decide that if we wanted to tell, like, did we want to play with each other? Did we not want to play with each other? And we were like, we'll go our separate ways if we can expand our recruitment within schools, like, and, and have more options to choose from. So out of high school, like, we didn't really have, like, we had Division One interests, but it wasn't as, like, they wouldn't pull the trigger on us because I guess they just didn't know if, if we were good enough. So, um, and it's difficult to go to Division One. It's not easy, so. I respected that, and me and my J me and my brother Jaden have a growth mindset. And as far as like, if if that's the narrative, then we just have to get better. So we ended up going junior college for one year, and I went to Sheridan in Wyoming, and he went to a school in Independence, Kansas, and we both had good years. Uh, I was a qualifier, and and pretty much what that means is that if you do one year of junior college, because like my transcript in high school was was well, and I didn't have to do two years to get um, like an associate or something like that. But um, I did well, like I said, um, a couple, a lot of schools were like talking to me, recruiting me, trying to see what I was, my what my next plans were. And Hawaii was one of them. And they kind of came in late in the picture, like very late in my recruitment. Uh, Coach Gina and, and Montgomery, but I mean, what they were telling me was it's all that I wanted to hear. Like, I didn't commit on any school because I was hearing great things, but it wasn't like a pinpoint of what I needed. And I think uh, what Gannat and, and Montgomery were offering me was an opportunity to get better, to like learn through my mistakes. Um, I was also like, it's Hawaii. I've never been, but they play on a big stage, ESPN, like a really good schedule. And um, I just thought all of that resonated with what I wanted. And they seemed genuine and about the approach that how my career might go as, far, as long as I have a, a growth mindset, like I said, and wanted to get better. And uh, it, it's worked out so far. I had some bumps in the road early, but very grateful. Like, I couldn't imagine a, a better 
um, choice for me. So, Well, Jovan, all of us here in Hawaii absolutely love that you are here, and we just love watching you play and compete. And what, Jovan, what is it about basketball that you love so much? I think basketball itself, like I just, you know, when you just have like a, like an urge about something or like a feel for something, like I think it was early, uh, my dad introduced us to the game and like it was like an automatic just love for it. Like I didn't, he didn't have to push us to be like, you need to go work out or you need to like watch basketball with me. We were like, yes, basketball, like let's play, let's, let's watch the games. Like, and I was also a Kobe Bryant fan. So, and as everyone knows, like his mindset, his work ethic, like it all just resonated with our hearts and desire to play. Like, I think that just kind of was natural instinct for uh, me and my brother. So. I think that had a lot to do with it, just like naturally having that urge to play basketball. I don't know why. It was just a, a burning desire in our hearts. And I think with that being said, like you can only grow from that if you if you already have a love for it. And I I wanted to get better. I wanted to I love the game. It's challenging. And I think I, I thrive when it comes to adversity. So um yeah. Well, much. Jovan, I love Kobe Bryant too. <laughs> and, and, um, you know, you're, when you're playing in the Stan Sheriff center, I mean, that is such a great environment. How big of a difference is it when the fans are there? I mean, does it, do, do the fans really give you that extra boost? Yes, it's, it's definitely a boost. And, and like I was saying earlier, just about COVID, like we didn't have any fans, like, you couldn't really do much or like see the community or know what that felt like. And I know that was huge in my recruitment when they were talking about it. So the fact that I couldn't feel it early, it just kind of felt like, I'm like, where's the love? Where's the, like, I need that personally. I need the fans. I need to, to see like build relationships with the community so I can feel comfortable in the arena. And I think as the fans start to come back, I started feeling more comfortable uh, within my Jersey, within the community. Like, and just diving into it because I felt the love. I felt all the aloha that came from it. So um, the fans are incredible. Like it, it's, you'd have to play in the, the Stan Sheriff Center or be there to know, but like they're, I'm so thankful for them because they really raised the bar in there and they're like amazing. Well, Jovan, I want to talk with you about the Diamond Head Classic this past year. And you hit the game winning shot to win, to help the University of Hawaii win the Diamond Head Classic. Tell me in detail about that shot and just that experience. Yeah, that was definitely the crazy experience that I had so far in my life. Like, I mean, you can always, like everyone in any sport can almost imagine any type of game winner on a big stage. Like, it's just like the rush that comes. It either happens or it doesn't. Like, you never know when stuff like that's going to happen. But um, there's always a chance for everything. And the fact that it could happen like that was just like an experience to come true. Like, and it's so hard to explain what I was feeling, but I do know as a team that uh, just going into Diamond Head, that it was, it was like really a goal and like, we're going to win this Diamond Head. Like Coach Gannat always preaches like, hey, like this tournament has been happening for so-and-so years. We have not won it yet. Um, it's an incredible tournament. There's great teams, obviously, like it's on a big stage, ESPN. But our team was like, listen, we have a great group of guys. Like, there, there's no way that it shouldn't be our tournament. This is our court. This is our home. Like, we have to win it. And so I think everyone felt our energy going from game one to game two and got to the championship game. It was a very good game, kind of ups and downs. But I don't think we ever let up. And I think our spirit of, like, seeing how bad in the fans, like, even the other team see, like, saw how bad we wanted to win the championship. And, like, going into that moment, we had, like, a crazy, like, turnover. And it was like, wow. Like, it was kind of a shot in the arena. Like, we had no chance to win it because just something unfortunate happened. We just turned the ball over. And jitters were probably going through our hearts, as anybody would, with the pressure of winning the, the first Diamond Head Classic. And we're in the championship. So it's like, you have to do it now. But I guess the guy missed the free throw, and he gave us a chance. And, like, that's all you need is a chance. So uh, I think I had like four seconds to, like we drew up something and I honestly like didn't run the exact play that we drew up. 
just me being a point guard, I'm like, okay, like I hear you coach, but like what I'm seeing right now was like, I'm kind of like, I only have time to do this. So I thought I just had time to dribble to the three point line and just pull it and like be confident in the fact that I could make it. So I made it and then the rest is history. Well, that was definitely an iconic moment in UH uh, men's basketball history. And Jovan, I want to ask you, what what do you like and admire about Coach Iran as a person? Yeah, as a person, I think what I admire and what I tell everyone, like even guys that may uh, come here on visits or recruits and stuff like that, like they always ask about the head coach, of course, like he's the man, like that's the guy you have to listen to and, and respect his word. But I would say that he's fair, like he's a very fair person, like he's straight up. And that's all I can ask for. Anybody can ask for. He's not going to sugarcoat anything and tell you this may be this and it's not that. So uh, for me personally, he's always been fair with me, like always been straight up. If I need to get better at this, uh, he states that if I'm not doing this well, if I'm doing this good, like he states that. So that's all I can ask for is his fairness. And and I respect that very much. So oh, I love hearing that insight. And what what would you say um, in specifically about his coaching now? Okay, why is Coach Iran a very effective coach? What does he do? Yeah, so Coach Gannat, as far as affecting the game, I think he's very like detailed oriented, and like even in practice, more so, even more nitpicking because in the game, there's no there's so many variables that can happen throughout the game and. And like he always preaches, like you have to be ready for anything. I know we're teaching this right now, and and but the guy may do this. Like you never know. Like so, it, like he keeps us on our toes with knowing that like it's not just what I'm saying. Like be a basketball player too. Like you have to be able to. I'm going to teach you the game, and I know most of you guys are here for a reason because you know the game. But as far as like being disciplined and the fact that like just always be on your toes and be ready and, and and make sure it gives us a chance. Like that's his main, what he preaches the most. As long as we're locked in and we do the right things, we listen, we we can fix a mistake and and get better from that. Like we're giving ourselves a chance to be great. And if we don't do that, then we're, we're limiting ourselves as a team. So I think that's what he really does well as a coach. Oh, that's great to hear. And and Jovan, how would you describe your team's identity? So that's that's an interesting question because uh, there's always like in this new college basketball world, like there's always new recruits coming in, like transfer portal guys coming in and out of programs. But uh, I would say like it's unique with our guys because I played with most of our guys for like three to four years, which is pretty well due to the the new things that are happening in college basketball. So um, I think the identity of our culture is, is growth, like individual growth and, and, and leadership. Like I started out as a, as a 19 year old here and like I played with Bernardo, Noel Coleman, uh, Juan has been here, but he hasn't played, but still him, like me growing with these guys and, and Gennats, like he's preaching, like, look at the growth, like look at the leadership, the, the talk, like it's all grown. And um, I think the identity is like, like get better, like just make sure that we're improving as a team and, and we're holding ourselves accountable to that. Like don't come back the same player, come back with a with a better mindset, with a better uh, will to want to win. Like we have to keep raising the bar. And I think that we've gotten better every year since I've been here. And this is our last year as the, the core that has been here. Um, and I think for the new guys coming in, it's it's more so just like, we're, we're going to keep raising the bar. Like, we raised the bar last year. The bar has to be even higher this year. And I think I was talking to you about that some weeks back. Um, yeah, so I think your book's also going to help us with that. Oh, right, for sure. And, Jovan, you know, Coach Iran has been really building a culture of excellence. And what, what would you say is, uh, you know, your team's culture of excellence? What is it like? Yeah, team coach of excellence. I think it's what I'm seeing this year. I can I can only speak on the now um, because it's just the moment that I'm in. But I think what I'm trying to preach and cannot and, and like all of our guys, like the older guys, is the, the culture of excellence has to be able to 
pick up on things, learn things, and and like make the correction. It's it's a difference between like hearing it and it going one one ear and out the other. Uh, great teams can can have a coaching point, hear the coaching point, see the coaching point, lock into it, and actually execute it the next play. Like it's either you did it well or it was or it wasn't good enough. And and I'm trying to make sure, like as a leader, that like I'm not gonna let anything slide. Coach Gennad is, and none of our guys should like. But we have to be able to have a coaching point and execute on it because if we can keep doing that over the course of the year, um, I think excellence will come out of that as just being a great team. Oh, I have no doubt for sure excellence will come. And and uh, Jovan, I want to ask you about my books. What what are some concepts that stood out to you in the books? Yeah, um, there was three for me that stood out and uh, you create the environment, discipline, drives, performance, and thirst for improvement. Um, and I'll touch on those things. Uh, you create the environment, I think, um, all great teams know, and even you know, being a, a winning coach, that it, it's about how you show up and, and prepare for the moment that is about to come. Like, you have to be ever, you have to be ready to go for practice. You have to be ready to go for a game, locked in mentally, uh, knowing what's at stake and, and how serious you approach that. Uh, is how serious the environment's going to be. So if, if we can all push each other with the right mindset, knowing that you can see that everyone in this gym is locked in right now, it's going to raise the bar. Um, and discipline drives performance. Uh, being disciplined as far as like, it, it can go from listening to to executing, to um, knowing that like, I want to make my teammate better, being disciplined in the fact that like, I we all want to be better in here. So if we can, it drives performance, like it's it's going to raise the bar, like I said. And I think uh, the thirst for improvement, wanting to be better. Uh, and I think these three points, they just all align with each other. And that's why it hit home for me is that as long as we can do those three things and, and hone in on like discipline, uh, a winning environment and, and like wanting to be better, like you can only, the arrow can only go up. Jovan, I'm glad you brought up those uh, specific uh, concepts because yeah discipline discipline leads to habits which yeah. lead to success which gives you a chance for greatness and and yeah it, it's a process and I like how you keep saying that it's it's about a growth mindset I mean you just try to get better every single day and Jovan um, Ryan Tanaka uh, did a big book donation of both of my books to your entire team and how do you think uh, the books will make a positive impact in helping your team? Yeah, I think the books, it, like like I said, like if, if we really dive into the books, and I think most guys have on our team, because I see the, the switch in, in certain guys, like really wanting to improve, really locking in. And um, you could tell, like you could just see the energy coming out of them that they're like, really locked in to be better and, and want to improve themselves individually, have better years and as a team. And I think your books hit home with just improvement, like as far as just building good habits, improving. And if we can all have that mindset, it's like, this is a team sport that we play. It's one through 15 and it's, it's the coaching staff, it's the trainers. Like if we're all locked in on the same page of improving, being disciplined, having good habits, like, your books, like it, it can only help us. Like it, it can only go up from here as, as if we have that right mindset. So, yeah. You, by the way, like I, I really think these books are going to help us. Oh, for sure. And and well, you know, Ryan Tanaka, he's also the founder um, of Brotherhood Grinds, Brotherhood and Sisterhood Grinds, and we had your entire team there uh, fairly recently. And Ryan's the owner of Giovanni Pastrami Restaurant. Um, what did you and your teammates enjoy about that Brotherhood Grinds experience? Yeah, so I, I met Ryan last year, um, and we had the same experience. And I think just like you guys, knowing you guys, and, and like I said, you guys are guys that want to keep raising the bar with whatever you do, making sure you get better. The event even got better this, this next year, um, this year actually, um, from last year. And I was like, wow, like this is this is a drastic change. And it was a great event last year. And the, the bar raised even more as far as the energy, the time and effort put in by you guys and and the people that came to support us. And 
help us with our endeavors after basketball. And I think our team was very grateful for that because we know that the ball stopped dribbling at one point and that they're just trying to let us know that Hawaii is if you really lock in and, and hone in on the culture and want to be here, like they can create a space for home for you. And um, that really hit home with us as a team. Like, and I was making sure that they knew going into this, like really take this serious because like they're, they're really looking out for us. Like they don't have to be here. They don't have to help us with future goals and, and stuff like that and give us advice. So I think, uh, thank you guys again for like allowing that because things like that can really change your perspective. Uh, and it changed mine as far as being in Hawaii and, and knowing the love that the community has for us and not just being just basketball players. Well, Jovan, you know, I was there, I talked with you and, um, you know, Governor Josh Green is there. So many of our community leaders are there. And isn't it eye-opening for, for your team to just, really know like wow i mean it, it's it's the com the whole community is really watching and supporting what you guys do um and it's so it's not just really on the court it's off the court as well right yeah it's it's off the court and i like the biggest and i think that's the biggest thing is being comfortable like knowing that like there's true support here like it's it's really like love and, and that's really helped me in my journey so far. Just like I said earlier, like my COVID experience through now. And it's just like the fact that I, I feel comfortable in my skin here and like knowing that I can go to the community and, and like big time names in the community. And, and they're all down to earth people. They want to come back uh, to guys like us if they met us or not to make sure that they know that we know that they love us and, and they support us. And uh, we want you guys to keep raising the bar because there is like kids and and the community that really looks up to this program and i and i think that i'm preaching to the new guys that are coming in like really take that serious and i think the guys that are here have taken that serious and are really grateful for that so jovan what what is your major and what are you hoping to do when you have life after basketball yeah so my major is is business uh entrepreneurship specifically uh I'm in the Scheidler, the school of Scheidler at UH. Um, it's just like a business school that you get accepted in with due time, due to like credits and stuff like that, that you have to uh, pass. But um, my, what I want to do with my major, I'd say is uh, first off, learn about business. I think that's important in this day and age as, as much as like Excel and all these things are starting to come to these workbooks and worksheets and, and numbers and stuff like that. So I think me, wanting to know that early is going to help me in the long run and um i personally like my dream is to start like a cafe or a coffee shop uh in hawaii i know that's not easy but uh that is what i want to do with uh, my business endeavors is from what i've learned uh hopefully come back with some some good type of money to work with and in order to start like my own little cafe in hawaii somewhere so that's that's my dream Oh, I love hearing that there, Jovan. And Jovan, let's go back onto the basketball court now. When when you're going to shoot a free throw, okay, I want to know, what is your mindset like? What are you thinking? What do you focus on as you're there just before doing your free throw? Yeah, I think um, before the free throw comes, it, it's really preparation, like, you know, like I'm comfortable at the free throw line because I've, I've been playing basketball for a while now. Like I've shot pressured free throws. I've shot free throws in the gym by myself with my teammates. Like I think it's about knowing that you've done this many times and it's a, it's a free shot. Uh, also relaxing at the line. Like, just like I said, if you've known that you put in work in certain things, like you're, there's no like tension, there's no, I don't know if I can make this. So I'm going up there very confidently knowing that I work on this shot a hundred thousands of times before. So uh, I just go up there and try to just do what I do best and like lock in on, on my work and trust my work. It's all about that preparation and just really the practice. I mean, I always say that you know, when you practice, you have to practice how you'll play and play how you practice. What are your thoughts about that? Yeah, that, that hits home, and I think that's one of the things that Gannat preaches as well. Like, 
And he tells me every day, like, make sure that, like, even when I came here earlier, like, you have to, I had to change my game speed. Like, the higher levels you go, the, the faster the game speed, the faster the physicality. And um, I think that you, like, you have to be ready, like, the preparation of knowing that the game speed changes. So you have to be, ab be able to be ready to shoot earlier and um, be ready to move faster. Like, it's just like, because you're playing with bigger, stronger, faster players. So um, I think just, that is, is the most the most part of it. Yeah, now, Jovan, I want to ask you about your strengths. What, what, what would you say are your strengths as a basketball player and as a teammate? Yeah, so I'll start off as a teammate. Um, I think that, like, I'm a good locker room guy, and, and that's where, like, comfortability within my, my buddies come from. Like, just knowing that I'll be there for them, I'll – make them laugh and like even though it is a serious sport like we can also have fun and, and make sure that the camaraderie is there um and the chemistry is there off the court because I think that helps on the court and um as far as on the court I think I I just have like this knack for just excellence and and making sure that things are right like if things are right I don't I don't like anything sliding from myself I hold myself to a high standard and I hold my teammates to a high standard so just leadership uh, and being able to do different things on the court and affect the game, like with passing, defending, being able to make shots. I, I think like I'm an all around player when it comes to that, just knowing that I can affect the game in different ways. Yes, I can. I can really see that. And Jovan, um, in terms of off court, okay, what do you guys do as a team off court to really enhance your team bonding? Yeah, I think the, um, just diving into the, the beach and the water. And uh, I know it's typical for everyone to do that out here, but I think that's what we need to do more of is like just get in the mud out here. Like whatever you can do to really dive into the culture and and just go around and see the island like with each other, experience that with each other. Whatever you get from that experience is is your experience. But as long as we can all see it with each other and like just keep growing within the environment that we're in, I think that's the best part of the chemistry that we can build off the court. And Jovan, you know, you're local now. And what, what are some specific beaches that you love to go to? Uh, I would say Pupukea and the North Shore is my favorite beach so far. Wow. What, why? Why do you love it there? Um, I don't know. It's, it's, it's deep in the North Shore. Um, I don't want like some some beaches have secret entrances, and I don't think this is like a well known entrance. But there like, like there's not a lot of people there. It's a huge beach. Like the sunsets there are beautiful. Um, the waves are always just like I love to watch the waves just come and hit the shore, and then like I dive into the shore break. And if I get dirty, it is what it is. But yeah, I just have a fun experience there. So, so so that's Jovan's private beach at Pupukea. <laughs> That's awesome. I love that. And Jovan, what would you say to some potential recruits that are considering coming to University of Hawaii? Um, I would say that, like, even though it's Hawaii, it's 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 beautiful. It's everything that you may imagine when you when you get here. It's still like a grind. Like it's still a workforce. Like people are working out here. People are getting things done and everything else is just the icing on the cake, obviously. But um, I would say that like really coming here with the mindset that you want to raise the bar. And I, I think that's anybody should do that going to any program, like come in one and make it better. So if, if that's your real mindset and, and that's where your heart resides. And as long as you like know that the community is behind you and really dive into the community that you'll have an amazing experience. Jovan, success can be defined in many ways. How do you define success? I define success by setting goals that you have individually, um, actually working towards those goals, knowing that like if I do, if you have a game plan for what you may want in life, if that's basketball, workforce, anything, like the fact that you can actually wake up and know that like I'm going to, get to my goals. I'm going to keep pushing towards what I want in life. And, and if it reaches fruition, like, and you see it happening, 
I think that's success because you put in the work for it. You know that, uh, you know, you don't know when it may come, but as long as you know you're putting in the work and it hits, like, I think success is more so the journey than, uh, because it will happen if you put in hard work. I completely agree. Jovan, you are a man of great character, and I want to really thank you for taking time to be on the show today. No, thank you, Rusty, again. Like, I've had an amazing time on the show. I love talking to you. I need to talk to you more as well throughout the season, too, just to make sure that I'm, I'm still on the same page. You have some great advice for me. So thank you again. We'll do that. Thanks, Jovan. And no. thank you for watching Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. For more information, please visit RustyKomori.com. And my books are available on Amazon and Barnes and & Noble. I hope that Jovan and I will inspire you to create your own superior culture of excellence and to find your greatness and help others find theirs. Aloha. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please click the like and subscribe button on YouTube. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. Check out our website, thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.